if I gave you the choice between a bowl of stir-fried crickets and a hot dog, you'd probably go for the hot dog. And if I took you to a restaurant where there were giant water bugs and palm weevil larvae on the menu, you'd probably ask me to take you to a different restaurant. And yet, two billion people in the world eat insects as a part of their diet, and for good reason. In many developing countries, insects unknowingly act as a key source of nutrition. They are superfoods, rich in protein, minerals, vitamins, and essential fatty acids. And they're extremely resource efficient. It takes drastically less land, water, and feed to grow insect protein versus a comparable amount of protein from traditional livestock. They're also versatile and delicious. They're enjoyed all over the world, grilled, dried, boiled, stir-fried. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, fine, let them have their crickets and I'll stick to my hot dog. <laughs> but maybe I can convince you by reminding you that Westerners love lobster. Almost 300 years ago, lobsters, the cockroaches of the sea, were more often used as a fertilizer or fish bait. They were forcefully fed to prisoners and slaves, yet today they are considered a delicacy. So here's the problem. In too many nutrient insecure places around the world, we're telling people to give up their bowls of stir-fried crickets for our hot dogs. And instead, we're pushing highly processed foods that are expensive, not terribly nutritious, nor sustainable, nor local. And we're making those foods highly attractive so that people are forgetting important food practices like insect consumption as they move to big cities. If we want to make a serious impact in food security and world hunger, then something has to change. And it starts with our food choices here. Because what we eat here is often Im imitated, replicated, and glamorized all over the world. And it really starts with how we think about protein. And a big part of that is insect farming. Yes, there is such a thing as insect farming. We like to call it micro-livestock farming. <laughs> In Thailand, over 20,000 farmers grow crickets as their crop. Now, I'll admit, Riding herd on a colony of crickets probably doesn't capture the romance of an American cowboy. But crickets, like many other insects, can rescue subsistence farmers from poverty and add a nutritional supplement to their and their families' diets. It's also much more um, resistant to disease when compared to, for example, um, cattle rearing or sheep rearing. And it, you can usually be profitable within a few cycles, so with much less technology and with, with much less capital investment. In Ghana, smallhold farmers have begun to farm palm weevil larvae. That's the larval stage of the insect that infests the palm tree. It's a delicacy. And it's really been threatened because Currently, people go out into the wild and harvest it, yet with the increased use of pesticides, that's becoming really difficult. However, getting farmers to breed the insect allows them to increase their income and stabilizes their access to animal protein and iron, which is so important in a country where anemia is prevalent and destructive. So what can free markets and science do to help insect farming and insect eating? Well, we can research on how to farm insects that have so far been resistant to being domesticated, like termites in Africa. Desired and popular, yes. Easy to farm, not so much. We can also work on how to make insects more palatable to a wider audience. Now, don't get me wrong, I could totally go for some silk peewee worms right now, but insects are diverse in terms of their texture and their flavor. And working on 
packaging them and processing them in healthy ways or turning them into a water-soluble powder so you can add it to your protein shake would really help increase their consumption worldwide. But it starts with how we approach food, how we approach protein, and what foods we decide to make cool and uncool. You see, lobster went from being a punishment to a delicacy because of two main things. One, we found an innovative way to deliver it to people by canning it. And secondly, as railway transportation was introduced to the continent, people went from uh, inland America to the coast and they saw it as this exotic food that they started to demand in restaurants. So the next time that you bite into a lobster roll, I'd ask you to think about delectable insects, the lobster of the land. Thank you so much.